G'day guys. So I haven't put out a video in a little while and there is a good reason for it. I have been renovating. I've done up my bathroom, I've been doing up my bedroom and I'm about to start on my study. But I thought, why don't I bring you guys along for it? I can film as I'm doing it, I can tell you guys what I'm doing and if you like it, awesome. If you don't, then hang out for the next aquaponics stuff that's coming out. So this is my study that I'm in at the moment. I've been using it to play on computers and edit videos and stuff and it needed a bit of an upgrade. So hang around and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, so this is my study. And this is one of the very first things that I built when I actually moved into this house. It's got a TV there and there's a computer below that. And I've got a little wireless mouse and keyboard and everything that I use for it. And it worked quite well for a little while. But when you actually get into doing a lot more stuff, you found it didn't work quite well and it's just time for an upgrade on it. So this is how it looks at the moment and I'm about to start disassembling it, pulling the TV out, and everything is gonna change. And hopefully, my free wife, it should change, and it should be awesome. So, the first thing that's gonna be happening once I do it is I'm gonna change all these tiles, the old sad skirting boards, move PowerPoint, put different lights in, so I'll have nice pretty ones along there, and it should come out really, really well. So, well, I'll get cracking on it. Clean everything up and go from there. just done a stack of area here by chisel and hammer and it sucks. So I'm gonna go find a little toy to make it a bit easier. Okay, say hello my little friends. <laughs>
Okay, now tiling is a lot like painting in the sense that if your prep work isn't good, then the rest of it will come out really crap. So I've come down here and I'll show you a bit closer. A lot of this stuff here, if I tile directly on top of that, it's just gonna make it so the tiles are very wonky and they won't be quite straight and get off all that other tile glue. So that when the fresh coat goes on, it'll be very flat and even. As you can see, I am a little bit dusty now. But I have sanded down all the walls and taken off the bits that are, that are coming out. I have patched up, as you can see, all the little bits of holes that were left over, all the ground. I'll take you around and have your little, your little show. So all the ground has now been smoothed down, so it is quite flat and quite smooth. And it is now time to tile. So these here are my tiles. I have about eight boxes of them and they are 300 by 600 walnut floor tiles and they are quite a pretty tile which is what I like. I like the nice big ones and they should be good. So I'll show you guys how to lay them out and how to get it ready before you start laying them or all that sort of stuff. I have my tiles here and we need to make sure that they all line up quite well because you don't want it going very slightly out otherwise you'll notice it at one corner and you won't notice it so much at the other one. So I'm going to put them out here, lay the tiles that way, lay the tiles all that way and make sure that they're all coming up square and true. And once all those ones are good, then I'll start gluing them down and go from there. I have a big bag of powder and basically I mix it with water. You want to get it to about the same consistency as toothpaste and then it's just a matter of spreading it on and putting it down. It's not really more complicated than that. So I'll mix this lot up and show you guys how it's done. So only mix, only mix up the amount that you can use in about half an hour. Any more than that and it will start to cure and it's just no good for it. So I'm going to start going. And for mixing, this thing is fantastic. Makes it so much easier. I had a mate that showed me how to do this and he is actually a professional tiler, so I took his advice with it. With bigger tiles, you do not want to put them in. You don't want to spread it down directly on the floor. You want to get the glue, put it on the tile, and then place the tile on the ground. Apparently, it's better and you can get it a lot neater and a lot nicer. So I trust the judgment, and that's the way I usually do it. So I'll start with the farthest corner, so you don't want to be walking on them too much. A little bit's all right. But I'll just spread it over one, put it down onto the next one, put it down, and then once you've got the first row of them done, I'll lay them out as a group, spread it over all of them, and then keep on going from there. And then we have these little spaces which go in between each of the show you a little closer. Have these little spaces that go in between each of the tiles and it keeps it very square and it keeps the exact same distance between each of them. And they are very handy to use.
So I have left my last cuts right to the end. It's been about it's been overnight since I was running out of time yesterday. But I just have these ones to cut, and they're relatively easy. There's a couple of different ways to do it. But the way that I was taught is use a pencil, not a texture or anything, because the texture can get through the actual tile and stick through it and show up on the other side. So I'll grab my tile and show you guys how I do that. So I try and cut from the back. So basically, since these are all going to be about the side, same size, I mark it where I want it, which is about there. And then I will take it out and finish it off. So I'll get my cup, I'll make sure that's a nice square edge, and then go from there. So I need to make four cuts around that size, and then I'll bring it back. So this one is only just not fitting, it's cut by a couple mil, which is quite annoying. So I'm up where it needs to be. And I know I just need to cut off that one. So this is a blade that's designed for angle grinding. It's tiles. So this is a blade that's designed for tiles. It works quite well and it sort of chips it. If you try any other sorts, they're just going to overheat and not quite get through the tiles. Whereas these sort of shatter away at what's there. This one's a little bit blunt now from quite a bit of use, but it still works quite well and should be enough for the few cuts that I need. So quite naturally, I have eye protection, hearing protection because this stuff is loud and it chips and everything everywhere. So, I shall get it. And I will square up my cuts just to make sure that my eye is not as bad as I thought. Okay. At last point, now that I've got all the tiles and everything down, it's time for grout. So, this stuff here is grout. It's basically the stuff that goes in between all the cracks, covers it up and just makes it nice and waterproof and dirt proof and easy to wash and all that sort of fun stuff. So, we basically mix it up in a bucket, a nice clean bucket, until it's about the same consistency as toothpaste. And then using my little pointing trowel, which is a little rubberized trowel thingy, which just pushes it in between the cracks, we'll just go push it through that way. And then we've got a nice clean bucket, so when you push it through, you'll just give it a nice quick wipe after with the clean sponge, and that's all there really is to it. So I'll get onto that in a nice clean bucket. Only use up the amount that you'll need for 10, 20 minutes worth, otherwise it will dry on you. And I find the easiest way is we've got, squeeze a bit of water in there, and then you just basically want to mix it up until it's the right consistency. No, no, that's right, that's still here. And now we have our toothpaste consistency. So we line it up with our first bit and just basically run it over, pushing it into the crack. And come over again. And then after we've done a certain amount, 
Try and pull up the excess with the trowel. And then bring as much water as you can out of the sponge. And then just go along over the top. Flip it over. Pull my most of the time. And then just clean out your sponge again. And that's that done. So this bit is now grouted. So then you can continue with the rest of it. Now, in my very humble and unbiased opinion, I think that doing up skirting boards in your house is one of the best things you can do to build up the, just the look and the feel of the entire place. I have came with what was actually called housing trust skirting boards, which is the cheapest of the cheap you can possibly get. And they were very, very dated and aging. So what I'm doing here is basically upgrading all the skirting boards. I've got really big fat ones, they're called lamb, lamb's tongue skirting boards and I just got some little pieces of wood here that go in the corner and then some skinnier ones that go over the door frame and they are really really easy to put in. I was quite surprised the first time I did it, they just went in really really easily. Um, just cut them to size, I see there's a little dot on there that I used to mark it to size and just I've got a little electric nail gun and tap them straight into place and they, it's just so, so easy. I'd recommend it to anybody any time of the day so yeah, it's pretty good. And man, I love watching time delay shots, it's so much easier. I wish it was that easy in real life, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. And as you can see here, you get a little bit of a gap because the floor is never exactly straight, the walls aren't completely straight, so you end up with a little bit of a gap. I'm not quite sure if there's a proper way to do it, but I use a bit of corner cement and mix it up and put it in between all the cracks and it fills it all in really easily as you can see I'm doing here and it glues it into place and the other times I've done it in the house it has just sucked really really well. Like I say I'm not sure if it's a proper way but it works quite well for me and I would recommend it quite easily and quite thoroughly and it just finishes it all off and makes it look far far neater and far nicer. I did have a couple of nails and stuff that were coming a little bit flush, so I ran around with my little sander and sanded down all the high spots. I sanded down it all, so everything is pretty much ready to go for paint and good to go. I had an electrician out because it's illegal in Australian law for me to do my electrical work myself and hung up some new lights. They are the antique sort of lights, you can't see as well in the photos, but they just really, really pop and it gives a nice warm glow to the house. And now it is painting time, which is always fun. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You run around, you paint. It's painting, it's good. And it just makes it look a lot nicer. As you guys can see, this room is now done, and I'm quite happy about that because it was a long, long weekend. So it was a long weekend that I did it, and I think it came out quite well, and I'm quite happy with it. As you can see, I whacked up some new blinds behind me, quick and cheap, easy jobs from IKEA, but they're quite good. And you guys might have noticed that I took a lot of stuff out of this room as well. So there is a lot more stuff going into it, which is going to be part two and three. I have this nice desk build that's going to be going on there and it should look awesome once it's done. It's a nice stringy bark wood and I'm taking it all, putting it all together and I am excited about it. So if you guys want to see all this stuff come together or if you want to complain that I'm not putting up enough goldfish stuff, let me know in the comments down below and subscribe if you want to see when the next ones come out. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I hope you got something out of it.